Welcome, everyone. This is the Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 23rd of April, 2021. Uh, remember, we live by the Jenkins Code of Conduct as we're in meetings. Be good to each other. So topics I had on the agenda included open action items, Java 11 as default in all our images. And let's see, we've typically talked coordinating proposed Docker changes. Would love to have further conversation there. Securing the delivery pipeline. Gareth, would you be okay if I put that one earlier in the agenda so that we could absolutely be sure we get to it? Yep, certainly. Okay. And security scanning. I can give a status report there on, but it's just a status report. Alex or Aditya, are there any topics that you would like to add? None from my side. No, none for me. Okay, super. All right. So action action item review then. Oh, Gareth, I assume none from you other than the one that you're already on. Great. Okay. So the JEP. I still have not opened it. I can the draft is there and encourage people to give feedback on it. The concept seems to be holding uh, and Alex mentioned it in, in a PR review to a particular person. And I was delighted that that person said, yes, they were interested in being a code owner. So it was sounded very promising. Um, the plugin installation manager thing is just going to go into the docs. It, it is becoming more and more popular, more and more important, and it keeps getting used more and more widely in more and more ways. Jenkins Infra is using it now, etc. Um, no progress from Jim Crowley on the multi-arch work, though I continue to use ARM64 in lots of ways, and I'm very impressed with it. And I still have a PR that I need to open for roadmap. Anything else on the action items? Okay, so Gareth, um, securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline, particularly JEP 229 and the refinements. Do you wanna take a minute and share with us what, what you're learning and what you've, what progress? Yeah, sure. So the, the particular piece, um, um, that I've been looking at is, yes, if there is, I suppose it's the refinements or enhancements around JEP 229 to allow automatic semantic versioning to trigger with um, JX release version. Um, so, so what we have is JX release version is available as a GitHub action that can be run to determine the next version based on your conventional commits history. Um, and then we set the version into the plugin before updating or before deploying, and then update the tag to point to the right place. Um, and it seems to it seems to be a nice kind of replaceable piece inside that um, yep, two twenty nine. So uh, seems to work quite nicely. The next step that we're we're really hoping to do is to try this out with a. Um, a multi-branch um, plugin. I don't mean the, the multi-branch pipeline piece. I mean a sort of a a plugin that needs to maintain uh, multiple branches at the same time. Um, just like box writing in there. <laughs> I think that's about it. So, so the the intent here for Gareth and, and for me, he and I are going to work together on this one is we intend next week to take one specific plugin, in this case, the Elastic Access plugin. I know you're all deeply committed users of the Elastic Access Plus plugin, and you're one of the 300 users in the world who use it. But since you're probably not, uh, I happen to maintain it, and it's a convenient place to do these kind of experiments with relatively low damage potential. I'm not going to hurt anybody. It's not like if I did this to the Git plugin and suddenly people became outraged. So access plugin will release 
two versions. Our hope is to release two versions or more next week as a test. And it will have switched to um, continuous delivery using JEP 229 with these extensions that Gareth has performed uh, and, and automatic semantic versioning. You're not into YOLO, op YOLO ops, Mark? I, I actually am in YOLO ops and this is the clear evidence I'm in YOLO <laughs> ops, right? Because I'm going to, you, you do only live once but you don't only live once with the Git plugin, right? You only live once <laughs> with, with small things first. <laughs> So I, I, I really do envision that the day will come when the Git plugin will use this technique because it looks so promising to me in terms of keeping things clean and tidy, and, but, but that's not the first target. Awesome, that sounds really cool. Yeah, well, and, and part of the experiment here, right, I, I transitioned the platform labor to, to JEP229 and it was a good experiment and it's been successful but I find it hard to read the version numbers. And, I, and I've heard others in the community comment that they find the version numbers hard, hard to use. So this is an attempt to refine that and see, could we use more commonly used version numbers and still have fully automatic releases? Excellent, yeah, all right. I'm definitely interested in this. I, I switched uh, token macro over to um, JEP229. I haven't done it. There hasn't been any PRs or anything for release, so I, I'm hoping this stuff comes in pretty quick so I can use it there. That would be really nice. Oh, oh, right. Because you see, I can't switch platform labeler because once I've delivered a release, there's no going back. But you haven't yet delivered a release, so this could potentially help token macro. Cool. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So keep Alex informed of progress, because again, token macro is one of those that's only installed in 260,000 Jenkins installations worldwide, right? So only only every Jenkins installation out there has token macro, so. <laughs> Excellent, all right. Uh, would, would love to switch after, after first tests, after successful tests. Very good, very, very good. Thank you, glad you were here today, Alex. That's really wonderful. Anything else on securing the delivery pipeline? Okay, uh, next topic was Java, Java 11 as default in all our images. Uh, so the crucial question for me there is the Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS and uh, Docker image today is delivering is delivering Java 8, but it, it, the day will come. The request had been made previously by Daniel Beck and others, please do those kind of changes on, on, L, on major LTS dot ones. And we've already done the baseline selection. I don't think we're gonna fit for June. So the rough, rough idea, make this transition in September, in the September LTS, um, so that we can use that that aligns with Java 17's targeted release date. It doesn't matter that it's aligned, but it's it, maybe I should say it this way near the Java 17 release. Any objections there on that concept? I think it'll be it would be discussed at the contributor summit. Um, I'll, I can raise a mark to raise an email to start the discussion. Uh, I, I suspect there may be a request, raise a JEP. And I'm not sure if, if that will be needed or not, but I think it's worth the discussion, question mark. Guidance there, Alex or Gareth, in terms of process. Alex, I think you've got the most experience process-wise for those. What's the what's the best way to success? I think that sounds good. Um, it's a big. I, I don't think it's a huge change, just because we've been running on Java 11 for so long now that I think it's extremely stable. But obviously, some people will probably not like it, just like everything. So 
I think it's fine if we do some announcements ahead of time and so forth to just let people know that that's coming, that, you know, in September timeframe, if they pull the LTS image, it's going to be uh, Java 11 going forward. I don't know if we even stop publishing the Java 8 images or stop updating. That's a, a, maybe a second part of the discussion. Um, well, well, so this one, if we replace Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS, that would mean we stop. That one would no longer be Java 8. And I would not create new images that are dedicated to Java 8, at least not for my personal taste. So, um, okay. but that's a good topic for transition described in the JEP. Yeah, I wasn't but, sure but, if we were planning on doing like a, changing the published location of the Java 8 images to be like JDK 8, like we have for JDK 11 right now. But yeah, it sounds like yeah. we don't need to. Well, well, I was, I'm hesitant to add any more image labels to track than absolutely right. necessary, just out of fundamental laziness. <laughs> sounds good. Okay, and, and and so that that for me, yeah. All right, so that that feels like okay. Great. All right. Anything else on Java eleven as default? Okay, next topic then, uh, proposed Docker changes, and we've got several there. So I am feeling completely behind on Docker image maintenance. Are others, can others give me a hint on how we're doing there? Gareth, I know you've made significant progress in using Docker images more consistently in Jenkins Infra. Um, I don't think though that that's touched the Docker delivery that we're doing, the image delivery that we're doing to create the base images. Am I correct there that your work has been yeah. around yeah, infra, we've been, not? We've been looking at um, better ways of, I suppose, customizing the controller image to um, contain the plugins that you need um, so that they're not downloaded each time on, on pod restart. That's the main reason. Okay, and so and that's that's really in the infra usage and getting it more and more of our infra towards configuration as code with with precisely specified definition of of that Jenkins instance, including its plugins and versions. Yeah, there's a, a bit of an issue with the the current Helm chart in that it, in the kind of default way that you add plugins to it, they're downloaded on startup. They do get there is a way of caching them onto a persistent volume, but um, there is also a possibility that when a pod restarts, it's going to download a newer image, a newer version of a plugin that you're not expecting. Oh. Um, and, and you may run into um, possible issues because of that. Um, certainly with the, what we had one with the EC2 plugin, where it was a minor release, but actually it was removing configuration and the pod was failing to start properly. So there are, it, it depends how, yeah, yeah, it's uh, not ideal. But that's, so what, what we do is we, we generate a plugins text file inside the controller image and basically download those um, with the plugin installation manager, those exact versions. Um, and then that becomes the image that is there. Excellent, thank you. Okay, very good. Alex, I'm assuming that, or is there anything that you wanted to share here, Alex, in terms of any things that we need to be aware of? On the that PR for the internals of install plugins is that what you're referring to just in general on oh. docker changes so install plugins certainly that one's hasn't been merged yet and i think we'll need to announce when we do and, and i i think i still need more tests but anything in general here or that specifically um i think my my kind of next thing that i want to look at is getting all the multi-arc stuff in 
because I would really like to use um, official like ARM64 and images and so forth. So I'm, I'm going to probably be looking at Jim Crowley stuff and see if I can move it along. Ah, um, okay, good. Get it integrated for the multi-arc stuff. Great. All right. And that, that I would love to hear that because I would love to be able to use it on the ARM64 stuff that I'm doing. That would be a great help. Thank you. Right. I'm probably going to set up a, uh, a local Jenkins instance and connect it to those um, like the S390X and PowerPC agents like you do. So I may be pinging you for some for uh, for ideas and so forth, because I know you have an awesome setup with um, for your testing. Oh, and yeah, and happy to happy to assist there. Absolutely. Just reach out because I've found them to be very reliable. Um, convenient to use and yeah it lets me fake ci.jenkins.io before i before i go live on ci.jenkins.io great all right any other topics there on proposed docker changes Next topic is just a status report on security scanning of binaries and images. So Oleg is, is leading an effort now, is discussing with LFX security, LFX security. Um, so LFX being the Linux Foundation, they have a project called LFX security that offers scanning of open source projects with what is at its back end a sneak instance. So, um, and right now the noise level because sneak doesn't understand Jenkins dependencies, um, the noise level is unacceptably high. He's working with trying to see, are there ways we could help that or improve that or work with sneak directly to, to get that better it's, it's still an ongoing ongoing investigation, nothing to announce, nothing to share. Um, now, in terms of there is the code QL work that's not really images and binaries, um, that's scanning of source code. Uh, that prototype is available and, um, or is, is running on some Jenkins repositories, thanks to Daniel Beck. Uh, if you're interested in getting more involved with that, you could reach out to Daniel uh, to, to join up with it. Now, Alex, in the hosting, ho and when you process hosting requests, were you using CodeQL as part of that or not yet? Um, so Daniel kind of hooked me up with a, um, like a local version of the CodeQL stuff oh. um, that, I, that I run locally. Um, it would be great to make it part of the IRC bot, but at the same time, it does require a little bit of human checking because sometimes the, there are false positives and, and things like that. So it's, sure. but it's awesome because it, it, it picks up a lot of the things that I normally have to look for in the hosting process for security things. Good. Okay. So just the fact that you've been using a local copy is already encouraging that, that says, as we as we're transitioning away from putting the so much burden on you for hosting requests that others are picking it up, they'll likely need to know how you do that and what the techniques are. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else on that topic? Now, Docker Hub itself has some image checking. Um, I don't know what it does specifically. Um, but uh, that might be something we look at too. Okay, good. Again, I don't know if it'll, it'll know about the Jenkins dependencies and stuff like that. So I don't know how useful that would be necessarily, but. Well, that, that one at least would let us, that has the, I assume what they're doing is something like Unchore does or, or others where they, they look for vulnerabilities in the base operating system image in addition right. to looking for known CVEs on the uh, product that's on it. So 
in this case, looking for known vulnerabilities because we failed to update an Alpine image or something like that. Right. Okay. Good. Anything else there? Okay, I think we've covered our topics. Any other topics we need to discuss? All right, let's call this meeting done. Thanks very much. I'll get the recording uploaded probably later today or possibly early next week. Thanks everybody.